Agents. Langchain allows us to ship them like hotcakes. But what are they? Large language models can reason via internal thoughts like explaining jokes, reasoning through a math problem, but they've also shown the ability to act in external worlds as seen in the Seiken and the WebGPT papers. So what if you brought the two together? You get an agent. An agent has access to tools to do things and a large language model to think. You give them a task and it will think of what it should do to complete the task and then do it using the tools we've given it. It's like creating your own specialized virtual assistant on steroids. Today we'll do a deep dive on agents and Langchain, how they were first influenced by the React, Miracle, and self ask with search paper, and how it has been continuously evolving with concepts like autonomous agents, commonly known through projects like AutoGPT and Baby AGI, and now expanding with new features like OpenAI's function calls. Throughout this video, we'll go through code examples to show how agents work. As always, the code will be hosted on GitHub. If you'd like to see more content like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. Now let's dive in. Most of the action agents implemented in Langchain follow the thought action observation pattern where it first starts with a thought. This is where the agent thinks of what he needs to do next using the LLM. But how does the agent understand what the LLM tells it? So if you've noticed on the previous slide, we can see that agents also have prompts and output parsers. The prompt instructs the LLM to format its response according to a specified output schema. It also contains a list of tools the agent has access to and could have a chat history. And some examples. The output schema specified enables the agent's output parser to parse the large language model's output into a Python object. In this case, the parsed object will either be an instance of agent action, having as instance variables the tools to use and its input, or agent finish, having as instance variables the results to send back. Now let's get back to our diagram. We now know that the thought step can either result in continuing or stopping. If we get an agent finish, we're done. Otherwise, we got an agent action and we move on to the action step. As users, the agent's thought action observation loop is abstracted away from us and what we're really interacting with is the agent executor. During the action step, it's the agent executor that will run the tool with the tool input we have received from the thought step. The agent class does not directly run the tool. By running the tool, this leads us to an observation, which is basically the output of the tool, which will be used to generate our next thought. The agent executor goes through this thought action observation observation loop repeatedly until we arrive at a final answer, or until we hit our early stopping conditions, which could either be the number of iterations or time that passed. Did you know that all of this is possible in less than 10 lines of code? Let's check it out. After making our imports, let's instantiate an LLM and load our tools. We can initialize our agents by passing in the tools, large language model, and the agent type. And that's it. Now let's ask the agent to find the average price for a one bedroom apartment in New York City and calculate a 20% deposit on it. Know that we're able to see the agent's thought process thanks to using the verbose keyword argument. Now, Linkchain supports multiple action agents. Let's quickly go over them. Before starting, note that everything that has React in its name will go through the same thought action observation loop we've just talked about. Let's start with the React doc store, which uses the React framework to easily search and look up documents within a doc store, as opposed to the more commonly used vector store abstraction. Up next, we have self ask with the search. Let's explain this with an example. By asking the hometown of the reigning man, US Open champion, the agent first asks who's the reigning man champion and gets the name as an intermediate answer. Then it asks where he's from to then receive his hometown as an intermediate answer, which essentially answers the final question. The agent basically asked itself a bunch of sub questions and answered them until it came up with a response. Now, all the other ones ending with React description are similar but with a few subtle differences. Here's the diagram illustrating it. The chat agents are compatible with the newer chat messages API needed to use GPT 3.5 and GPT 4. The conversational agents store the conversation in memory to pass the context over to future iterations. Out of all of them, only one supports using tools that accepts multiple inputs. There are other frameworks of agents that you should know about which are currently in the experimental folder of the Langchain repo, like Plan and Execute, Autonomous, and Generative Agent. Let's take a closer look at the Plan and Execute agent. First off, it came more out of a necessity. Action agents worked well until a couple of pain points emerged. People started using using agents for more complex use cases, and as it became more adopted in enterprise, a need for stability also became more apparent. Plan and execute agents were the response to this growing pain. Let's check back the control flow for our action agent. We see that after sending our request, the agent might then look for a tool, runs the tool, and then examines the output of the tool, and so on and so forth. Another way to solve the request to handle more complexity is to first plan ahead all the steps to take and then execute each step. This framework requires two things, a planner and an execution. 
executor. The planner will have a language model that will be utilized to reason and plan multiple steps ahead. The executor can use the same language model or another one. The advantages are that there is now more reliability since we're separating the planning and acting concern. This also enables us to swap the executor's LLM for smaller and cheaper fine-tuned models optimized for specific tasks. A disadvantage is that we're making more language model calls so for user-facing application, model latency is something to keep in mind. Now let's jump into the code. We'll use plan and solve to create and send a sales report to our email using data only available in an SQL DB. If you want the code, check out the GitHub repo. Now the actual code is very simple. After loading our environment variables, we instantiate our large language model and we set up our Gmail toolkit and our DB toolkit. These toolkits are just multiple tools packed together. We put all the tools together inside an array, load our planner using GPT-4 and our executor using the same model. But notice that we could have used something else here. We instantiate our plan and execute agent and then ask it to essentially make a sales report summing up the sales of each salesman and sending an email to the head of sales. It will take some time but you can see the whole chain of reasoning which is really fascinating to look at and of course the end result is in our inbox. If you're curious about what inspired this framework check out Baby AGI and the Plan and Solve paper which were cited as major inspirations from the Langchain team. All the links will be down in the description below. Talking about Baby AGI it was one of the first few autonomous agents. It started as a semi-serious semi-fun experiment to lay down what an AGI architecture could look like with current available tools. So the cool thing about it is that you give it an objective, for example, make a thousand dollars. Then in step one, the first task it pulls from the database is to make a list on how to earn a thousand dollars. The execution agent in this case will devise a plan that could look like one, open a bank account, two, make digital paintings, three, sell it on a marketplace. Step two involves a context agent that stores output from step one along with metadata in a vector database. This is to make maintain some form of memory between model calls. Step 3 examines the results from step 1, create new tasks, and reprioritize them according to the objective. And this essentially loops back until it gets done. As you can see, these kind of autonomous agents are super expensive to run because of the number of calls they can make, and they could also run into infinite loops. For now, autonomous agents are mainly fun projects. Another interesting agent framework is called Generative Agent. From the Generative Agent paper, the team has created a sim-like universe where characters planned and went about their days, interacted with each other, formed relationships, and even celebrated birthdays together. Does that sound familiar? Now going over to tools, you can find out available tools and toolkits by running the following command. Toolkits are simply a couple of related tools packed together in an array. For example, we can see in the source code that the Gmail toolkit contains tools related to using Gmail. You can create a tool by using the tool from function factory method. It will need a function which accepts a string input and returns a string output, a name, and a description. Using Pydantic, there are also ways to provide more information about inputs. There's also a decorator that you could use to define tools and a structured tool class if you want to create your own multi-argument tools. Now for prompts and output parsers to actually get a good understanding of how they work, check out my previous video Langchain 101 The Complete Beginner's Guide. In any case, I suggest taking a look at the source code of the Langchain repo and to go through the prompts written. You will see for a given agent framework what the prompt is and that will help you build a deeper intuition on how the magic happens. As this video is getting a bit long, I'll cover OpenAI function calls in another video. It's pretty exciting to see the field move so fast and this might be the future direction for agents. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to be notified and as always, thank you for watching and have a wonderful day.